Welcome to part 11 of our Dark Forces lore play series. Over the last couple of missions, we recovered some navigational data that will hopefully lead us to the mobile Dark Trooper factory, but first we need an Imperial computer to decode it. And apparently the only one powerful enough is on Coruscant, the literal capital of the Empire. Our main goal is the Imperial Security Operations Building, but we're dropped off in a plaza so we have to fight our way there. While I do that, let's talk about Coruscant. The idea of the Imperial Headquarters being a planet-wide city was always George Lucas's, but it wasn't named until the 1991 novel Heir to the Empire by Timothy Zahn. The way Zahn tells the story, some people at Lucasfilm convinced George to keep the name. Of course, the Coruscant scene here doesn't look anything like what we've seen in the films. A lot of that can be contributed to the graphical limitations of 1995, but we also never saw Coruscant on screen until 1997, and the special edition release of Return of the Jedi. I mean, technically we saw it in other games and stories like Shadows of the Empire, the occasional comic, etc., but those appearances are chock full of inconsistencies. Seeing it in the film was able to provide a reference going forward. Now we can see the security operations building swarming with troopers. Inside were stationed some of the Empire's very best troops who were on high alert at all times. Hey, I said on high alert. Wake up, guys. I've been lighting this place up. Pay attention. Okay, back to some history. The Imperial Capital was originally meant to appear in Return of the Jedi, although it was called Had Abaddon in the earliest drafts of the script. It was still meant to be a city planet, but it would have two Death Stars orbiting around it. Underneath the city would be Palpatine's throne room, surrounded by a lake of lava. Actually, some of that idea has been kept in the new canon. Not the Lake of Lava thing, but there is a confirmed Sith Shrine underneath the Jedi Temple that Palpatine would visit. Now we're near the heart of the security building and the puzzle that took me an embarrassingly long time to figure out. Actually, I don't think I would have gotten past it if I hadn't been streaming and had a lot of help. So instead of watching me struggle for literally 20 minutes, let's quickly go over Coruscant's Legends history. Coruscant was the home world of two major species, the Tong and the Zell. The Zell were the genetic ancestors of the humans, and the Tong were a species that would eventually die out, but not before they started Mandalorian culture. As the two races evolved alongside each other, war broke out, and the Zell drove the Tongs off-planet. This was all 200,000 years before the events of the films. The surviving Zell began to urbanize after their victory, and 100,000 years later, the entire planet was covered with the city. Am I still stuck here? Yep. I'm surprised there aren't skeletons of other explorers that got stuck in this stupid maze. Okay, back to history. Around 30,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, Coruscant fell under the rule of the Rakata and their infinite empire. This meant the enslavement of their race, but they were also able to learn from Rakatan technology and they sent out ships to colonize other nearby planets. 5,000 years later, the Rakatan Empire collapsed. After regaining control of their planet, the Coruscanti people signed the Galactic Constitution and founded the Galactic Republic. And so the planet city cemented its position in the galaxy for the next 25,000 years. Now I've finally beaten the puzzle and I've gained access to the reader. With the nav data encrypted, we just need to make our way back to Jan. So real quick, let's go over a little canon history. We don't know much about the planet before episode one, but after Return of the Jedi, things really start to depart from Legends history. A lot of people have asked if Coruscant was destroyed by Starkiller Base, and no, that planet was Hosni and Prime. The New Republic Senate decided to mix things up and actually rotate the capital of the galaxy between planets, so Coruscant elitism would kind of die down a little bit. So the Senate itself was on Hosni and Prime at the time of The Force Awakens, and as far as we know, Coruscant is still just fine. Now we're almost back to Jan, but what's this? The most fearsome and deadly bounty hunter in the galaxy has been sent after us. Surely this will be the end of Kyle Katarn. Why did we think we could infiltrate the very heart of the Empire? Oh, he's down. It's fine. It's kind of strange that they would just leave Fett on the ground like that. He looks dead, but he's obviously not. They should have just had him fly away. But that brings this week's lore play to a close. If you want to check out the rest of this series, you can run through this playlist. If you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and consider checking out my Patreon page. As always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.